So now that we've done the inheritance problem, um, I'm going to kind of use that to jump off to a short discussion here and recap of things that we've learned with using tables to analyze functions. So in the past, we've already learned some, some tools that help us analyze certain types of functions, but it's been pretty specific to certain types of functions. Um, for example, for polynomials, so here's uh, um, an, an input-output table for a specific polynomial that I've um, that I made and used, and I haven't told you the polynomial right now, but um, try to think for yourself, hmm, uh, what's another column that was helpful for me to figure out what the formula was, what the rule was for the polynomial, and or even just look for patterns anyway, and um, hopefully recall that using a difference table, and we use that Greek letter delta to stand for the difference, and I want to remind you, it's not just the difference of, you know, 28 minus 11, it actually just means like from 28 to 11, what did we go up or down by? In this case, this actually went down by 17. And then you can go ahead and, you know, um, to get some practice right now, you can finish filling this difference table out and then finding a polynomial that fits this. And uh, you might need to extend and use another difference. I'll tell you it's quadratic, so you're gonna need to go to the second differences. So uh, go ahead and pause and do the work now for that. Okay, let's check your solutions. And uh, let's finish this. 11 down to zeros, we went down 11. And then here we went down um, by five. And from here to here, we actually went um, up, actually, by one. So that's the first positive difference that we've got. Now, if you really want to find the formula, like we said, we'd, ex we'd have to extend this to another layer and do the second difference and don't forget, this doesn't necessarily mean squared, it just means we've done two iterations of the process, which I know is a little confusing, but that's okay. Um, and from negative 17, uh, went up to negative 11, up by 6, and then from here to here, went up by 6, and here to here, went up by 6. Hopefully you got that correct. Um, and if you made any mistakes here, again, you can pause again and then now try to find the formula. But the formula for p of x here, since you see the second difference is a constant, um, this is a little trickier because we didn't we didn't start with zero. So zero is a very helpful location here. And what is my output for zero? Oh, that's easy because we know that it's quadratic x squared plus bx plus c. And since zero gives me zero, we know c gives me zero. Okay. And later we don't need to write that. And then a we've already talked about how it's half of that, so we know a is three. So what we know here is that three x squared plus bx plus zero, but just plus bx will be our uh, function. And then we can just use any input output. Let's use one negative five to get b. So we see that this is three plus b equals negative five. We'll need to subtract three, okay? And so what we get is negative five minus three is negative eight, okay? So my final formula here and make sure this is written down, I'll erase it real quick and I'll just finalize it, is going to be 3x squared minus 8x, okay? It was a quick recap of that. This one, do the same thing, but it's exponential, right? So we don't use a difference table to help me analyze this. We actually look at what's being multiplied as we move along. Perhaps it's easiest to see with these uh, integers rather than the fractions, but again, go ahead and Go ahead and do that. Fill out the difference table. Uh, excuse me, not the difference table. It's the ratio table, you could call it. And again, remember, this doesn't mean we're taking this divided by this. And so it's weird thinking backwards. It's actually the next output. If I take an output and divide it by the previous output. But remember, just think, this multiplies by what to get here, which multiplies by the same thing to get here, etc., etc. Okay. Uh, now that you've done this, let's check our work. You should notice that actually, don't worry about the fact these are all negative, they're just multiplying by a single factor of three. So we know it's gonna be something times three to the x because we're accumulating a bunch of threes, right? And the good thing is, since we already know that zero makes negative two, this one's a little easier than that. Negative two is my initial value, my starting value, times three to the x, right? Because you plug in zero, 3 to the 0 is 1, and then times negative 2. Now, this is where we're getting to new content. This is uh, an introduction of some new symbols and stuff we're going to use for um, 
the next thing, and okay, so I put question marks up here because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of saying what kinds of functions will you use this for, and really this, this can be used for any function. It's actually a totally, it's a totally different use. It's not, it's not for finding um, the r of x rule, like in this case we've called the outputs r of x. This way that we're going to use actually is not really, the purpose of it is not to find the rule for the function itself. We're going to start talking about how can I actually find a rule for when I add all the outputs up, the sums of a function. And you can see in the inheritance problem, that's what we were doing. The nature of that problem was we're getting an inheritance and we're paid installments year by year. My total inheritance is the sum of all the years leading up to whatever, you know, whatever year I'm at. And so new notation for you to know here, okay, is a new type of column we could add to do stuff that we're going to work with in this, uh, in this next topic is this, okay? It is the Greek letter sigma. It is the capital sigma. And just like we use the Greek letter delta for that, the capital delta, but sigma means in mathematics, we use that symbol to represent the sum of things. So um, we, um, those capital letters we use for f of x and g of x when we did the inheritance problem are um, equivalent to it if we had just instead said, you know, use this symbol to say the sum. But often in mathematics, we use the capital letter to represent the sum actually. And again, that's actually a calculus concept. So let's go ahead and just write this down. And this sum right here, is, well, I don't know why I'm looking at my notes, uh, I could just add it. Uh, currently the sum uh, from one plus three is, oh no, sorry, for the sum table, we just start with the original there. And then we add three and we get four, plus five is nine, plus seven is 16, plus nine is 25, and plus 11 is 36. And, that is very interesting, actually, because if you notice this, look carefully at these numbers. You probably recognize what type of numbers are these. These are the odds, right? So the very initial odd number, I guess, when x is 0 is 1, and then 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. What is this? It's linear, isn't it? Right? So this is linear. Interesting thing about this, uh, there are some shortcuts, but if you wanted to actually, from there, use a different table like we did in the inheritance problem, you could go on and you'd figure out that this actually jumps up a degree. Notice that here, a quadratic, right, uh, was used there. And um, when, we take a, when we take the difference table, it goes down a degree each time. Uh, but when we do the sum table, weirdly, this linear jumped up a degree to become a quadratic. And this quadratic should be easy to see. Look at this pattern. Hopefully you see that these are all the perfect squares. Now, if x is 0, is it just literally directly that? It's not. But again, try to do this on your own real quick. And um, look for patterns. Um, you can use a difference table, but you can look for patterns here. Anyway, so hopefully you've thought this through a little bit, and you should get m plus 1 squared. Not just n squared, but it's like the next, uh, whoops, I should have said x, excuse me. It's the next one up. It's the square of that. So there's a little introduction for this, and um, yeah, see you next lesson.